When we talk about the history of Europe, we often mention uh, figures like uh, Adenauer, de Gaulle, Schumann, Monet, de Gasperi. I would add to that distinguished group also Chopin, Shakespeare, Beethoven, Max Planck. Uh, the roots and the origins of Europe as a political organism go much deeper than that. And we shouldn't forget about those very roots of Europe and not of the European Union. The European Union is a very useful tool which we can use to promote and to defend and to further our interests also in our immediate neighborhood. And uh, picking up on that, uh, I would like to say that uh, in my view, the neighborhood policy or policies is one of the most important, one of the crucial challenges the European Union and Europe are facing uh, nowadays. These policies have been neglected uh, over the last two or three decades. Uh, we have not been very successful in drawing, for example, our eastern neighbors closer to the European Union. The situation in the Mediterranean basis is quite messy. And I think that this requires a common effort to combat all those threats which are coming from different directions, <coughs> and uh, especially from our immediate neighborhood. Um, but this also requires unity. And we have not been united so far. And I will now tell you an anecdote. I know the audience usually hates anecdotes, but this one is going to be unfunny, so fortunately. <laughs> I was interviewed uh, this morning by an Indian journalist who asked me, well, we, we touched up on many issues, but he asked me one specific question about uh, my country's relationship with uh, the European Union. He asked me, <coughs> what about your recent frictions with the European Union? And I just needed two milliseconds to find uh, a handy answer to that question. I said, we are the European Union. It's not a, a diplomatic spat between Poland and the European Union. We are the European Union. We, might, we may have different views, we may have different opinions, but we are part of the European Union. Uh, moreover, we have a very strong mandate to express our opinions quite clearly and quite openly, because more than 80% of the Polish population, according to, uh, to the recent surveys, are in favor of Poland not only remaining in the European Union, because there is no question of poll exit right now in, in, in Polish politics, but also they are happy being members of the European Union, being citizens of the European Union. So it's not a conflict with the European Union, it's a conflict with one of the EU institutions. As many other conflicts, many other EU member states have or have had with other EU institutions. Uh, but that uh, leads me to another issue, which is uh, quite ticklish from Poland's perspective. Uh, one of the terms I absolutely despise when, when I hear uh, when I, I, I listen to, to many debates about the future of the European Union, one of those terms is Eastern Europe. And this term has sadly resurfaced recently, mostly in the debate about the immigration crisis. Uh, as long as we use this term, as long as many Western politicians still consider Eastern Europe as worse part of Europe, of the European Union, we won't be able to be speaking about united Europe. I'm afraid that the Iron Curtain, which physically does not exist any longer, still exists in our mentality, and mostly in the mentality of many Western politicians and political elites. This is what we, have, what we should fight quite vehemently, because this is one of the threats which still uh, hovers around the, about the future over the future of the European Union. And uh, 
we need that unity, and we need to dismantle that, uh, that new iron curtain in order to deal efficiently with uh, all those problems, all those issues that the European Union is facing right now, and especially the neighborhood policies.